How do? You can't make a goblet without a lid. Or can you? Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to King Bespoke Creations. Right, today we are going to make a goblet and we are going to do it without using a lathe. Primarily because I don't have one. And neither do a lot of people, but a lot of people will have saws, chisels, maybe a rasp, something like that. We might introduce the Dremel or some kind of rotary tool as well, um, just to clean up inside edges. Whatever we're going to do, whatever tools we're going to use, it's going to be simple stuff. So, well, let's just grab some wood and see what we can do. Like me, you might not have a bandsaw that works that thick. So we're going to have to do this by hand instead. Uh, it's not as scary as it might look. We're going to use some stop cuts, which means we're going to be sawing down to the depth that we want to cut to, to make sure that when we come, it doesn't split off any further than we want it to. It gives us a nice safe cut and nothing bad's going to happen. Right. Let's get some arms working. Now once we've cut these straight lines off here and like we did at the at the bottom as well this little internal section uh, could be tricky just using a saw so instead of a saw I used a hammer and a chisel now that might scare the heck out of you thinking about chiseling into there but because of these stop cuts that we've created it means that cut will not split any further in so as long as you're not blowing so hard that your chisel bounces off and chips that then you're okay. If you're having to hit that hard, it means your chisel needs sharpening. So that's one profile done. Um, all we need to do now uh, is put that same profile along this face so that we can cut in like that. So then we'll have that profile as a square top. The cutout isn't going to work here because of all the angles as soon as we even start folding you can see that just doesn't line up and it ends up being short at the bottom. So that's no use to us now. All we need to do is measure off from the center line at each of these points uh, and that will give us the correct angles as we come through. Okay so let's get measuring. Right, now, this is where things can get a little bit tricky because we have an awkward shape now. So trying to use this vise to hold this sideways on, it's going to want to slip and push and move around and it's just not going to grip very well. Um, as much as we're working on thin sections down here uh, so I can use a, a more delicate saw, so I don't need it holding quite as firmly as we did before, but this isn't going to work. Realistically, I want to clamp it that way on. Uh, this vice doesn't come out far enough, but I know a vice that does. This is the Dremel Multi Vice. Uh, this clamps to any workbench or your dining table, kitchen worktop, whatever it is that you've got, and it opens out to almost eight inches, which is really, really big. So something like this can get clamped in sideways on, 
Uh, it just works like a lot of clamps where you push it in and then you're going to tighten the ends up to make that work. There's a little release button back here. So all you're going to do is push that together, tighten it up and suddenly we've got a vise. So once we're clamped into here we've got a few options to get rid of these excessive parts. We could saw through them or we could go back to the chisel again because effectively I have a stop cut at both sides. One of the features of this clamp is that it's on this ball joint so I can rotate this around and move it so I don't have to move. But also it means that I can butt this end up onto the desk and tighten that up and that's going to give it a lot more strength for when I come through with a chisel and bash into there. It's not just taking all the pressure down here and forcing it onto the bench as well. There we go. Right, so once we've got it to square, all we're going to do now is take the corners off. Now the easiest way to do that is to go from the centre line that we have here to the edge and split that in the middle. So we're going to put a centre line in there and then do the same on the opposite corner like that. Okay, now all we need to do then is you cut down following that line down there, following that new line down there and that will cut that off perfectly to create as well it'd be an octagon won't it by the time we've done with those eight sides so that's the next task repeat that all the way around and we'll have something that looks a little bit more circular and going through and cutting all the corners off leaves us with something like this so one of these is pretty much done now I'll say one of these but I've made two you can see this one's just slightly more rounded shape rounded profile but it's cut out in exactly the same way now this is where these two are going to change this is going to stay with these angles this is the design that's come through uh, so that's going to be very pleasant stays there we're going to decorate that but it's going to feel like this when it's done. This one, we're going to continue to take these edges off to give it a really fully rounded uh, feel all the way through. But I'm not going to go super smooth with it so that it looks like it's come off a lathe. Because I don't want it to look like it's come off a lathe. It's going to have uh, chisel marks, the gouging marks in there uh, to prove that it's been hand carved. It's part of the look, go with it. Don't try and replicate what power tools do with hand tools. Why would you want to do that? Make it look like it's been handmade. So that's the next challenge, is to get some carving chisels out, some nice gouges, and start rounding this off um, all the way through. Right, so we've come to an interesting point now. Um, we've decorated some of it, so a little bit of carving in there, some pyrography in there as well. And we've finished rounding off this one. So it's nicely round again with some decoration on there as well. I wanted to do the decoration before hollowing out the middle, um, just so there's extra bit of support there. So as I'm going in with a chisel, or if I might want to tap it delicately, it's going to be less likely to crack or do anything nasty. 
So the next challenge is to hollow this out. Now this is where it gets tricky. The outside stuff, the grain kind of wants to play with us and everything's great. On the inside, because the grain goes up and we're going in like that, every time you go in with the chisel, it wants to chip out. So chisels become less of an option. So this is where we're going to grab a few different power tools. We can start off with the hand drill. So with the hand drill, I put a bit of tape on as a depth stop, so I know I don't want to go any lower than that, because at the bottom, that's where it starts to chamfer again. And all I'm going to do here is go uh, a set distance from the edge on each of these corners. Um, and then I'm, I'm lining down the drill bit down that corner there. And I'm eyeing up that I'm running parallel with the side of the cup with the drill bit as well. And if as long as I hold that steady, I shouldn't then drift and poke out the side. <clears throat> Let's see if that actually happens. So through a combination of drilling holes and chipping out that centre section, we end up with a hollow object. Now obviously that needs a heck of a lot of smoothing off. So this is where I'm going to grab things like the Dremel, uh, using the flex shaft and things like that, with some cutting beads on the end, or we might swap that over to a sanding piece. Um, I might use a finger sander as well. And there we go. So with an awful lot of sanding and half a dozen coats of Danish oil, which I've checked is food safe, um, we have some finished chalices. Goblets, call them what you will. Uh, they've been a really, really fun project. I haven't done anything like this before. That hollowing out was certainly a new thing to me. Um, and it worked out rather well. It was really fun. Uh, give it a go. You don't have to have a lathe. Uh, to make anything, you don't need a bandsaw, you don't need a table saw. You can get away with small little tools. Hand tools are superb. I'm loving the Dremel at the minute, that's great. I'll put a couple of links in the description if you want to grab yourself some of those. Uh, in the meantime, get in your shed, sharpen your tools, and I'll see you soon. God bless. <laughs>